we are going to look at some more counting and probability problems. In this first problem, they are telling me that customer account numbers for a certain company consist of two letters followed by five single digit numbers. These are all numbers here. Okay, they wanna know how many different account numbers are possible if repetitions of letters and digits are allowed. So that's important to pay attention to. So starting with the first letter, there are 26 different letters to choose from in the alphabet. Since they tell me that repetition is allowed, there would also be 26 choices for the second slot. Now, when you think about single digit numbers, there are 10 of those. So you do have the digits one through nine, but you also have the digits zero. So there would be 10 choices for the first number slot. And since repetitions are allowed, 10 for the next slot, 10 for the next, 10 for the next, and finally 10 for that last slot. So 26 times 26 would give me 676. And then when you multiply that by 10, five different times, that's gonna add five different zeros on the end. And so we end up with 67,600,000 different um, account numbers for this company. Okay, the second question talks about there being four sets of balls. They are numbered one through five. So one, two, three, four, five. So then there's another set. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. So four sets like that. And it says four balls are randomly chosen without replacement. So I'm going to think of four stages here. Without replacement means once I take the first ball out, I'm not gonna put it back. And we wanna find the probability that the balls have the same number. Now, let's just focus on one number for a minute. Let's say we wanna find the probability that all the balls are number one. So we know starting out, since there's four sets of balls, there are four balls with the number one in the bowl. Out of 20, total balls. So that would be the chance that the first ball is a one. Now, without replacement means I can't put it back. So on that second draw, there would only be three balls left with that same number one out of 19 that are in the bowl. And then once that ball is drawn, when we reach back in for the third one, there's only two left with the number one out of 18. And then finally, once we reach in on that fourth draw, there's only one ball left with the number one out of 17. Now, that would represent if I wanted all the balls to be the same number. And we just said, for example, for it to be the number one. Well, there are five different numbers that could happen with, so you're gonna end up multiplying that number by five. Now, you can get straight on a calculator, or I like to do a lot of reducing and then see what I actually have left. So, for example, I know 4 will go into itself once, and it goes into 25 times, and then that's going to cancel with the 5 that's there. I know that 3 will go into itself once, and it goes into 18 six times. And then I can say 2 will go into itself once, and it goes into six three times. So now if I let multiply what's left over on top, I just have a one times another one times a one times a one. So I just simply have one over. And then if you multiply what's left on bottom, you have a 19 times a three, which is going to give you 54, and then times uh, the 17, Actually, that 19 times 3 is 57. And then if I do, if I multiply 57 times 17, I end up with 969. So I can either leave my answer in fraction form, or if I change it into decimals, they want it to the nearest millionth. Okay, so on this next problem, it says it is presentation day in class, and your instructor is drawing names from a hat to determine the order of the presentations. If there are 19 students in the class, 
what is the probability that the first three presentations will be Mila, Todd, and Kelly in that particular order? Well, there's only going to be one way to choose Mila, Todd, and Kelly in that particular order. And then if you think about how many ways there are to choose the three people who are going to speak, since order matters, we're going to call that a permutation. We have 19 students to choose from. We are choosing three. And so if you actually get on your calculator, 19 permutation three leaves you with 5,814. So again, you can leave it in fraction form or round it to the nearest millionth. And then finally, on the last question, we have a box of jerseys for a pickup game of basketball contain eight extra large, six large, and three medium. So that is 17 jerseys altogether. And it says, if you are first to the box and you grab two jerseys, what's the probability you randomly grab two large? Well, there are only six in the box, so on your first grab, you would have a six out of 17 chance of getting a large. And then, um, since you're grabbing two different jerseys, that's like doing it without replacement, so there would only be on your second jersey only five left out of 16 in the box. And so if I actually multiply that out, I'm gonna get 30 out of 272. And then if you reduce, or if you divide both of those by two, um, that's how you're gonna end up with the 15 out of 136. And you could also, if you want it to instead, you could reduce first. I could say six divided by two leaves me with three, and 16 divided by two leaves me with eight, and then you still get the 15 over 136.